to uh, read the word together here. We're going to read a, a brief section. It's a parable from Mark chapter 4, and then we're going to explore some of that together. So let's read this aloud together. You can remain seated so everybody can see, but we'll read this together. So Jesus said, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches, and birds can make nests in its shade. Dear Heavenly Father, all praise and all glory go to you for this past year. We just praise you for the fellowship, the lessons, and for what you have become for this church. We ask special blessings today upon Pastor Tim, and I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would open our hearts and our minds to receive his message. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So there was a day back when you guys were first starting and through some strange connections, actually, of me taking my car to get in to be repaired at Tester's. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he and I got talking, and he said, told me about the church they're planting. He's like, actually, we could use some speakers. Would you be available at all? And I was like, yeah, I guess I could do that. And so I, I'm, was it the second Sunday yeah. that I was here? I was here on the, yes, the second Sunday. Um, I was your guest speaker. Um, I think nobody knew me except testers. And they're like, yeah, we'll take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that Sunday when, when I was here, uh, we talked about the wilderness spaces of our lives. So and specifically, we talked about it this way, that, that one of the unique things about wilderness spaces is that they're in between. So you're not where you were, and you're not where you will be. You're in this middle place in between. Or, or another way to say it is you're on the way. And it's an uncomfortable place. It's an uncertain place, right? But one of the things we talked about, it is, it, it is a place where God meets us very uniquely. We're in tune differently to what God has to say in those in-between spaces. We're searching differently, listening differently. And there's an intimacy to that space, as hard as it may be, where God meets us uniquely. And I think you can look at the story of this church and say, man, God met us in such crazy ways in those in-between spaces. We, uh, we ended, you just referred to the cup of dirt, but we kind of gave you a picture. And we, we talked about your, your grade school children's project where they bring home the white styrofoam cup full of dirt, <laughs> right? And, and you sit it on the sink and you water it and you watch it. And, and there's this great sense of anticipation that God's going to do something in that cup of dirt. Well, they're saying the seed's going to do something, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And the scripture was already referred to, and it was the scripture we used that, that I'm about to new, do a new thing. Don't you see it? Or we said, are you even looking for it? And so this cup of dirt was our children water it and watch it, water it and watch it with great anticipation, fully expecting something to come out of that cup of dirt. And we kind of left you with the image of, so you hold a cup of dirt. And you can say, it's just a cup of dirt. But God says, but watch it. There's something that's going to come of that cup of dirt. Today, I want to kind of build on that idea in Mark chapter 4. So there are actually three parables um, about sowing and reaping or uh, farmers and seeds, however you want to put it, seed and growth. Three different parables in Mark chapter 4. Uh, that have that theme, that metaphor. So the first one is one that you know well. It's the parable of the sower. A farmer scatters seed. It lands on varying types of soil with varying results. 
And the, the whole point of that parable is the condition of the soil matters. That, that kind of crosses over into our own heart, like the, the reception of your own heart matters when it comes to God's work. Um, so that, that soil matters and our hearts matter. The second and third parables that, that do the seed growing type thing, the, they're kind of both about surprise. So the, the first one is the parable of the growing seed. The second one is the one we read, the parable of the mustard seed. So in the parable of the mustard seed, it's like this tiny seed, but surprise, look what comes out of that. In the, the middle parable, the parable of the growing seed that we're going to look at today, it's like, surprise, you couldn't see what was growing beneath the ground, but there's now a harvest because the farmer scattered the seed. And so there's these two parables that have the surprise piece to them. So we're going to look at the second one today, that middle one, the, the parable of the growing seed. I'm going to read it to you from the New Living Translation. It says this in Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he doesn't understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First, a leaf blade pushes through, then heads of wheat are formed, and finally, the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. So what's interesting about this parable is the main object of focus is not the farmer or the soil or the farmer's effort. The object of focus is the seed that has life and power in it. And because of that life and power in the seed, there's a predictability to it that if you plant it, something will happen. You may not fully understand how that works or why that works, but this parable highlights that when you plant it, you can expect a harvest at the end. That seed is going to grow without any help. But here's what the farmer knows, right? When he plants that seed in the ground, that when I plant it, I'm done. And then I wait for God to do his work. But there's a predictability to it, right? For the farmer to plant the seed. Like, I know once I do my work, then I'm in the process of waiting for that seed to produce a harvest. The moment, the moment that seed goes in the ground, the power of that seed is unleashed. It's going to do what God created it to do. And that growth begins hidden underneath the surface of the ground, unseen, but doing something that will eventually be seen. In reading about this this week, I came across an incident, we'll call it. So in, in an excavation in some tombs, they found seeds that they estimated were about 4,000 years old in Egypt, and they, they found these seeds, and they thought, well, let's plant them and see what happens. And believe it or not, a 4,000-year-old seed produced. It did what God made seeds to do, and nothing was going to stop it. It only had to be planted. Jesus said, that is what the kingdom of God is like that there's this power and this predictability of God working. There's this slow, quiet process of growth. And there may be times when you look around and say, I don't see it, where I don't see what God is doing. I don't see what God is up to. You may not see the evidence yet, but you will. That is God at work. And Jesus said, that is what the kingdom of God is like. So let's back up and walk through the parable and, and start with the, the farmer scattering the seed. So first thing I want us to notice is there's some work to be done up front. The farmer plays a role, right? 
the farmer scatters the seed, and then there's going to be a roll at the end where the farmer is going to harvest the seed. But in between, in the planting and the harvesting, is a process of growth that the farmer has no say over. Jesus describes that reality this way. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he doesn't understand how it happens. So think of it this way. If you were to ask a farmer, like, tell me in simplest terms what you do. And a farmer might say, I grow crops, which would be accurate, right? But what Jesus is highlighting is technically you don't grow crops. Technically, what the farmer does is they plow, they plow the field, they plant the seed, and then they harvest the crop, but they don't grow crops. So this, this idea of night and day, asleep or awake, it's to highlight, like once that seed's in the ground, there's nothing else for the farmer to do except wait. So he goes about his life, night and day, asleep or awake. He goes about his life because he knows there's nothing he's going to do to speed up that process. process. There's also nothing that's going to slow down that process. That seed is going to do what seeds were designed to do by the creator. So once the seed is in the ground, it's done. All you do is wait until it produces. So uh, let me stop here and just like put this in front of us, we have the opportunity as believers, as followers of Jesus, we have the opportunity in our lives to plant seeds. So we can give, we can give generously, we can pray with people, we can pray for people, we can have spiritual conversations with people, we can sit down and answer questions for people, we can share our faith with people. We can share our story with people. We can encourage people. We can sit with people in their pain and just be a godly presence. There are multiple ways that, that we can make a difference or plant seeds in Jesus' name. And any of these things done in Jesus' name has the potential that Jesus is talking about with this growing seed. Don't underestimate it. Don't assume because you didn't see anything right away that nothing is happening. So here's the other thing that Jesus highlights. He, the farmer, doesn't understand how the seed grows. So we live in a scientific enlightened time. We're like, oh, we know, <laughs> right? And here, here we know clearly about sowing and reaping. The farmer all knew that. Like you plant it and you harvest it. Kind of understand the process the farmer understands he has a part in that process, but what he doesn't know is the full mystery of how that small seed planted in the ground produces a harvest. And even in our day where we know so much, and you can watch a time-lapse video that's pretty cool of watching a seed grow, like you watch it for a seed, and then something sprouts, and then it pokes through the ground, and then pretty soon it grows, and you like get to watch what happens over months, and you get to watch it in a minute, and it's like, wow, that's amazing. And while we can fully explain what is happening, here's what we can't fully explain. How there is life in that seed. So we can tell you about the process. We can show you a video of what's happening. But what we can't do is fully explain how there is the full life of a tree or a plant in that little seed. We have a, an oak tree on our property. I think the picture's coming up. So that is way bigger than you would ever imagine. It's a f approximately, we, we estimate in talking to an arborist, about 400 years old. It is massive. Um, and, and so you look at this tree, and we can stand under the, the branches of it, and you also know that the roots go, they say, as far as the branches. So as far as those branches going underground, that's happening as well. And so you, you look at this massive oak tree, and people are just amazed, like, wow, like 400 years. So back up and just take this in for a moment, that that 
a 400 year old tree started as what? A seed, an acorn. Like this, this small acorn over 400 years becomes that. Jesus is saying, that's the power of seeds in my kingdom. The emphasis in this parable is not so much on what we do. We do, right? We plant the seeds. But the emphasis is on that miraculous process that has nothing to do with us. That the farmer has nothing to do with that miracle, and we have nothing to do with the miracles, except that we planted the seed, and then God does what God does. In fact, from a farming standpoint, it can seem a lot more like a mechanical process than a miraculous process. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. You got your harvest. But in reality, what Jesus is highlighting, yep, you do this, you do this, then there's a miracle that happens, and you do this. And Jesus is saying, that's what my kingdom's like. That miracle, you did something, but then there's nothing more you can do, and then God did something, and then you get to do something again. That's what the kingdom of God is like. So when we pray, with people and for people, when we encourage people, when we share our faith, when we walk with people on their journey, we're planting seeds and we don't know exactly what happens or where that's going or when that's going to happen. But one thing Jesus wants us to know in this parable is when God does some things in the kingdom, when you plant those seeds, there's nothing stopping it. It's going to do what God intended it to do because there's life and power in those seeds. So not only do we have a massive oak tree on our property, but we have a farm field right next door. I have never lived by a farm field. Um, never lived in places where the farm fields are right there, actually. So I didn't grow up on farms. I didn't grow up around farms. And now I get to observe up close what happens on these fields. So here's some of the things that I noticed. I can tell you right away when the farmer has plowed the field. I don't have to be an expert in anything. I can literally look out my window and be like, oh, he plowed the field today. Because you can see the evidence of what the farmer done, did. I don't even have to see him do it. I can just look out my window and be like, he plowed the field today. But you know what I can't see? I cannot see when he planted the seeds. The field looks the same. In fact, I, I look out, and I may have even s saw him do it, but I still can't see the evidence yet of what's been planted. What I can see is only when that plant begins to break through the ground. And now I can tell you, that's the seed that we're seeing. And I can't tell you even what he's planted unless I ask him and tell him I'm not going to know by looking at the dirt like, oh, he planted soybeans. Because I can't see it. But you will know. If he planted corn or soybeans or wheat, you don't know yet, but you will. This is what Jesus is talking about. That is what the kingdom is like. You may not see it yet, but that's what the kingdom is like. You will see it. Whether or not you notice it, whether or not you're paying attention, whether or not you can say, oh, God, is it work there? This parable is reminding us that always God at work. Like the seed planted in the ground, God continues to work quietly, relentlessly, and consistently. You can count on it. And this parable is a reminder that, see, what we see is happening above ground. We don't get to see the miracle that starts below the surface. 
We don't get to see the hidden things that God is up to. But that doesn't mean God isn't doing hidden things. So 18 months ago or so, as you guys went through the chaos of a broken church and fractured relationships and grieving the loss of something you'd been a part of for many years. And so if you're looking above ground, what you see is disillusionment and disappointment. But God was doing some quiet, invisible work that would lead to this day when we sit here together and say, look what God has done. We couldn't see what was going on underneath the surface. We can only see what happens above. But this parable is the reminder that you may not see it, but trust, you will. You will see it. So Jesus brings us to the, this visible evidence of the quiet work, and here's how he describes it in the parable. The earth produces crops on its own. First the leaf blade pushes through, then the, the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. So here's the thing I want us to, to notice is there is a slow process of growth, and you don't get to bypass it. Man, in a fast-paced society where microwaves rule the day, right? Fast food is like the way to go. Like, what's the quickest way to get results? That's the day we live in. And here's the thing about planting seeds. You're just not going to get quick results. But you will get results. And that's true in the kingdom as we plant seeds. That though you can't rush it, you can't bypass it, you can't shortcut it in any way, that the first glimpse you get above ground of something breaking through is the first hint that, wow, something was happening. I didn't even know it. And that may not jump out to you right away. Like when you first see what God has been doing. Like when you look at a farm field and see the first sprouts coming through. It's not really impressive. You know that's just the beginning. Like it's not the harvest, it's just the start. And so we can look maybe at some of the small things that God is doing and be like, oh, I kind of expected more. I was kind of hoping for more. And yet you're just looking at the first sprout of what God has been up to. We like dramatic stories, right? Like they're just, they tell better. Like when you can share a testimony, and a lot of times the sh testimonies that we share, they're dramatic ones. Like, man, I was a mess, and my life was this, and, my, and, then, and then here God did this. And, and it's, it's great because you can easily say, see, look what God did. But what we miss in telling only miraculous stories is that the vast majority of your story is a slow, relentless, quiet, work of God and it may not tell like a great story but I'll tell you what it does it tells of God's long history of faithfulness and that I mean we'll all take miracles right give me a miracle any day God you want to give me a miracle I'll take it but have you ever given thanks for the slow, relentless, ordinary work that God has done in your life. And said, thanks for that. Jesus describes this slow process. Like first it's a blade, pops through, and then the ear, and then the harvest. And so for us, like we may take some risks here and there. You may share your faith with someone. You, you may pray for someone. You may answer some questions for someone, and you're like, okay. But have you ever done it? And then you're like, I mean, I, I'm not sure that made any difference at all. Which, put it in the parable, would be a little bit like the farmer sowing seed and looking back and be like, well, that didn't do anything. <laughs> right? 
That's what Jesus is describing here. There's a slow incremental process. And when we're looking for quick results, if you plant a seed and then turn around and say, well, that didn't help, you're missing the point that God does slow, ordinary, incremental work. And he is up to something. You just haven't seen it yet, but you will. Sometimes. Sometimes. You've got to learn to be okay with ordinary, with slow and relentless. In some ways, while we think it takes more faith to trust for a miracle, it may take an extra measure of faith to trust God in the slow and the ordinary and the relentless. Because the thing about the miracle is, boom, it blows and it's there and I'm like, wow, look at God did. But in the ordinary, you've got to keep watching. You've got to keep trusting. You've got to keep paying attention. In fact, You've got to assume God is up to something before anything breaks through that you can see. That's what Jesus is saying. So that, that is what the kingdom of God is like. What I want to remind us of today is this. As a church, we have spent a year planting seeds building partnerships, giving generously, praying for one another, sharing our stories and our journeys and our faith with people. And it can be easy to look back and say, I mean, I don't know if that did anything. But here's the point. Because you can't see anything yet misses the point that every seed you plant is going to bear fruit going to do something. How many testimonies have you heard that start with something, you know, that they often are miraculous, but it starts with something mundane. This guy stopped me and said this, or he quoted this, and then my heart was churning, and I began looking for answers. Like, there's so many stories like that, and that isn't the miraculous piece. That is the, the first seed that started the journey. Are you okay with planting the first seeds and patiently watching for God to do what only God can do? What we want to do as a church, we've planted seeds and we want to watch, but we're just one year in. We got a lot more seeds to plant, so let's do that. And then let's watch in expectation believing what Jesus said. So here's what the kingdom of God is like. You plant them, and then God's going to do what God does. You watch for it, and then when it's your turn to step in again, you step in and do it. Kingdom growth is slow, sometimes imperce imperceptible, often incremental, but ultimately, here's what Jesus is saying, it's inevitable. You cannot stop it. You can look at any regime that has tried to silence the gospel, and it keeps going. You can look at history. You look, look at modern times. Pick your spot, and there are seeds that continue to grow no matter what is done to suppress it. Someone said it like this when you talk about the slow growth of your seed. What we envision and what the story we want to tell is the 180, right? I was here and boom, and I went that way, which is the picture of repentance. But somebody put it like this. But you do know that one degree of change is the first step to 180 degree change. So as we're planting seeds, one degree is the first step. It's not going to wow you. It's not going to blow you away. You may even say, did anything just shift there? But here's the point. It will. You just have to leave that up to God. 
It's not yours to manipulate, to fix, to move, to accelerate. It's not up to you. This is God's work. Over the next foreseeable future, I simply want to invite us to be people who are regularly planting seeds and then trusting God to do the slow, ordinary, consistent stuff that he does. And that as we look back, we get to say, look at that. Look what God has done. I want to invite you to join us on that journey to be those types of people who anticipate the kingdom of God moving just like Jesus said it would. Our part, jump in at the beginning, plant the seed, and then at the end, wait for the right time and follow up and harvest. That's what Jesus said happens in the kingdom of God. I'm going to invite you to pray, and then we're going to sing a song together. Lord, as we, we come to you on this Sunday, as we celebrate seeds that have planted that have resulted in this, us meeting under this tent, these partnerships with these ministries. Lord, and these ministries all are the result of seeds that were planted and faithfulness, sometimes slow and incremental over time with a couple miracles sprinkled in. I ask for the future of Rooted in Christ that we would be content with the slow, incremental, patient work that you do. And even when we're not seeing what we were hoping to see, to trust that there are things moving beneath the surface that we just haven't seen yet, but we will, because that's what your word says. Thank you for what we get to see from a year in, looking back. And Lord, with anticipation, we want to look ahead, believing that we will see more and more as we plant the seeds and then you do your work in Jesus' name. Amen.